plaintiff, Teresa Brown, found out in fourth grade that she'd been adopted when she was four months old. And she believes the defendant may be her biological father. So she petitioned the court for a paternity test. Defendant Anthony Richardson admits that he got a Caucasian woman pregnant years ago, but says as soon as her family found out she'd been impregnated by a black man, he never saw her again. Anthony hopes the DNA test will prove he is Teresa's father. And you all are here to determine paternity. So yes, sir. with that in mind, let's proceed. Give me some background on this. Um, well, I was adopted when I was four months old by loving parents. Um, when I was in the fourth grade, it was pointed out to me by a fellow student at a parent meet and greet that my parents weren't my parents. They were different color. Um, I didn't understand what that meant. So I asked my parents and they had to tell me I was adopted. Your parents are Caucasian? Yes, sir. Both of them. So who told the little fourth grader your business? Most of that type of stuff comes from home. Do you uh, know? He had, he had, I, I'm not really sure. He was also Caucasian. Um, he had pulled me to the side and told me that they couldn't be my parents for they were different color. Perhaps you owe him a debt of gratitude, but tell him to stay out your business <laughs> yeah, or anything right. else. Tell him this the only business you want them to bring to you. Don't bring you no more. <laughs> don't bring you mess. All right. <laughs> From that time, fourth grade, how did, what was your mindset? And did you go home and uh, inquire with your parents? I, of course you did, you said, and they told you, go ahead with that. Uh, that I was adopted mm -hmm. and uh, gave me a file. Um, and I kind of just went over it over the years. But um, from that moment on, I was very angry, um, had a lot of anger issues, trust issues, in and out of therapy, um, just a lot of problems due to that um, life event. I decided to um, start looking, and so we did. We tried to find um, my parents, my biological parents, um, but they changed the law on me. So I was unable to when I turned a certain age. So then I kind of just um, gave up and just was very angry and felt very empty. I'm sorry you felt angry. Now, what was your anger directed at your parents or at the process? The whole world. Why? What were you angry about? Um, just the, the lies that I felt like I had been lied to my whole life. Um, I just, I don't, I've, I was just very angry. I felt um, abandoned, had a lot of abandonment issues. Got it. That so it wasn't on. the parents that raised you. It was the parent that gave you up for adoption. Yeah, I'm mostly mm -hmm. very mad at my biological mother. Got it. Uh, throughout my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. And let me just say this to you. Um, if they say something else, once again, I know you're not going back to the fourth grade, but these folks get on my nerve with that. Tell them because of the way you look, they're talking about you couldn't be. Tell them, yes, she could. Tell them we all got some black in us, including them. Amen. The first Amen. person exactly. was, was the first civilization and the first man was born in Africa. First man yes, or woman. Sir. So, uh, Mr. Richardson, why don't you give me a little background on what you may have known or suspected over the years? Um, well, I, I met her and we started dating. And, you know, normally she, she got pregnant. And I don't know if it was the, the state we were in, but she, she finally she was pregnant, told her mom. And her mom moved from one little city to another one. You know, and I kind of talked to her mom, to her grandmother, really, you know, every, every other day or so until um, she found out I was a black man. And, hey, I haven't never seen her or her mom since. Her grandmother? Yes, sir. Was all right until she found out you were a black man. She was all right with the relationship. Right? Yes, sir. And uh, we hope she's changed. Is she alive or do you know? You probably no, can't sir, go around there to know, can you? <laughs> no, All <sir>. right, <laughs> you probably got a full restraining order on you. <laughs> what did he do? He come over here with his black behind. He know better than this. This is the uh, this is up north. 
<laughs> Y'all like talking well, we about the South for all the time. Your Honor, I am from the South. There you go. They ran you out at first, but now you can go back. Go back over there. No. <laughs> I, I was born and raised in the South. What part? Born and raised. Uh, Mobile and Lockley, Alabama. All right. Been to Alabama a lot recently. Many things have changed there. Uh, let me hear more. Um, growing up, I had always had this feeling that my dad wanted me and cared, but my mom did not. Mm, um, how did so, you hold on? How did you get that feeling? Uh, just something God gave me. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Go ahead. Never met him. Um, never met never, him. I still haven't met him in but person. But you felt in your heart that he wanted you. Yes. The father. And yes. if he is the father, that's exactly what he's telling us today. That what kept yes. you from him was racism. Yes. So keep that in mind. No, that should strengthen you. That should strengthen you for a fight against racism because of how it affected your life. Now, this is a prime example of how racism affected and altered your entire life. So instead of being mad, sad, and the other things, understand that that's your calling. This was a gift for you, for you to understand your calling and to do God's work, all right? All right. You always felt that way and that he may have wanted you. And what did you feel and how did you um, pursue the relationship with your mother, if at all? Because you're pursuing it with um, your dad. My husband um, gave me a DNA test for my birthday to find out my heritage through uh, Ancestry. And so I linked that up. And then my best friend, because I just kind of gave up because it kept going nowhere. Um, she would take her own personal time and do it for me. And she came across um, my bio mom, reached out to her. She said she wanted nothing to do with me. Um, that when was she gave, this? Uh, Anthony's name. When? Uh, this was last year, October. We got Anthony's name from her, so we contacted him. And he. we've been trying to meet each other for a year now. Um, we FaceTime yeah. and call each other um, and stay in touch. But uh, we just don't have the complete proof and she wants nothing to do with me. So, um, do you I get just, the sense that that's race also? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes. sir. No, giving them, uh, the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it wasn't race. Maybe it was, we don't want anything different in our lives in terms of relatives, in terms of, family attachments. We don't want anything different. So we understand. Just giving you an example. I always use my own life as an example to give some wisdom to others. When my sisters, who I didn't know, they came to the television show. I never knew they existed. I was a little bit out of shape because they knew about me. They had known me, they say, since the time they came to the housing projects where me and my mom and brothers had been abandoned by their father. I guess my father. And so when they came, I was a little resentful, but I couldn't take it out on them. I, I didn't make them inner circle family like one of my 10 family members, but I invited them to every event I had and would acknowledge them as my sisters. Even though I had resentment, my resentment went toward my father, uh, not them. Uh, so I say that to say sometimes it's not race some and yeah. because I wasn't ready and really haven't been ready to embrace my dad's entire family. And it has nothing to do with race, obviously. Uh, so that's give them a little benefit of the doubt, because, you know, a lot of times and our viewers are going to say as well that, you know, it isn't always racism. That was racism with you, Doc. When Mama said, don't come back <laughs> over here, uh, that was racism. Uh, That's right. So then where did things go from there? Um, I just continued to build a relationship with Anthony um, and my dad. Uh, and it's also crazy because the universe, I named my son Anthony and all the boys and my family on that side are all Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> so I, this is just really neat because it's coming up on a year and, and we know, but I don't know. I've built a lot of walls in my life. 
um, have a lot of abandonment issues, relationship problems. Um, <laughs> so it would just, this is going to be a life answering question I've had. Well, let's hope the answer is um, what we um, presume it is, because it would make you feel a lot more attached to someone in your life. Well, how about the parents that raise you? How do they feel about this? Because I don't know they're, how I would feel about it if I raised yeah, you. They're a very um, happy for me and Ooh. think that this is going to really help uh, that hole I've had and all the problems that they've dealt with Good. over the many years from me. Um, so mm. they stand behind me and my mom uh, that raised me, she's really excited to meet Anthony. Um, yeah. They're very thankful for me. Another life comparison is Linda and I raised my niece. She hadn't met her mom. And uh, she met all her siblings and met her mom, I believe, one no more than a couple of times. Um, and we desired her to be with her mom, um, but her mom was unavailable. In fact, probably when she was age 10, her mother came before me. I didn't mother know. came before me when I was a judge. <clears throat> and I sentenced her to rehab. But I don't know my kids found out somehow. I never told them. And they mentioned it to her. Uh, like the fourth grader mentioned it to you. <laughs> and it hurt her a little. It hurt her a little. Um, but the love Linda and I showed and then her dad um, was enough to overcome that. And I believe uh, wow. if this is your dad, that love is going to be enough to overcome all those guys. Amen. All right. Amen. And now, you're, are you hopeful that she's your daughter? Well, y'all, I know she is. All right. Well, if you know, I, I know. Wait. I can't wait to meet you in person. <laughs> if you know, I know. 99.9%. .9%. How about that? There you go. 99.9. .9. God bless y'all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, babe. <laughs> I love you, Daddy. I really can't wait to see you in person. Just, just want to see you, baby, close and hug and hold you. I can't wait to see you in person, and I love you. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs>